Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, all praises and double honors due to Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach by Malak Yahweh Shai. Secondly, this is Brother Yardan, W5 Detroit. Coming back at you with yet another cold cut. Today in this cold cut, I want to address um, a wicked thing that America is promoting. They promote it damn near all year round, but June is what they call so called Pride Month. And in this month, they go full throttle into pushing their agenda on the youth. And it's it's a terrible time. It's a terrible time. <sighs> this is, uh, I'm not calling him by that name. I can't remember his, his real name, but that's the guy right there. That's posing, that's, that's imitating, that's trying to be like a, a woman. But he's a guy. It's a, it's a man. And you can see this uh, this this ridiculous quote. It says, "Be true to yourself." What is the point of, of being on this earth if you are trying to be someone that you are not? Push through and be the best in you. And this is a real hypocritical quote because we can see him attempting, or trying to be a woman by putting on different hairstyles, clothing, trying to change his his. And this is what the terms, how they use, you know, I'm changing my pronouns. He's trying to do everything in his power to be something that he's not. So he's not being true to himself, right? His true nationality is the Israelite, right? From the tribe of Judah, more than likely. Got to be wearing fringes, not dresses. Got to be wearing pants, not skirts. This is a terrible example on how to raise your kids, by letting them do whatever, whatever we want. That's in fact one of the ways, damn, damn near the, the main way or main mentality that got us into captivity. Through that logic, that's why we're here in Babylon, seeing our people get shot by the police and our own people, seeing our people get poisoned by the food. This is Sirach chapter. 30 verse 9. I'll set up verse 9. And this is going to be a little different than the previous uh, cold cut um, a, few, a, a few days ago regarding Dwayne Wade and his and, and him not being a man and, and his woman being a man in the household. This one's going to be directed more so towards the youth. This is Sarah chapter 30 verse 9. Conquer thy child and he shall make thee afraid. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. To conquer your child, that means to spoil your kid. I'm, I'm going to pull up, um, I'm going to Google it real quick for y'all. Indulge, pamper, right? And that's that's a good word enough, to pamper. Because when you see the pamper, the synonym should pop up, spoil, to coddle. All right? So spoil thy child, and he shall make thee afraid. Because you don't know what's going to happen to him. He's going to be spoiled, right? He's going to, you give somebody so much, and the first thing that doesn't go their way, you're going to turn into a demon. And that's going to make you kind of like, damn, what the hell happened? Right? And that's what a lot of these uh, these single mothers say. You know, what did I do wrong? Well, you had your baby twerking at six. You said it was okay to, for her to go out wearing clothing that she shouldn't be wearing. You was conquering your child. Play with him and he will bring thee to heaviness. Obviously, that's not in the same sense, you know, playing football with your kid. But when you so loose with with raising your kid, all hell is going to break loose. Right. And it's going to bring you more more heaviness than joy. Verse 10, laugh not with him, lest he slack, lest thou has have sorrow with him and lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end exactly there's a time and a place when to play with your kid and when to discipline your kid if your child is out of line then what do you have to do you have to resort to proverbs thirteen twenty four, right you have to bring forth that rod but if you don't if you spare the rod from your child then that's showing that you hate him right not in action but in in, in a form of discipline and, and um, if you understand what I'm saying, I'll pull out the precept. You hate to discipline your kid because 
when you use the rod, that's a way of disciplining your kid. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteth him best times. And guess what the Lord does to us? He chastises us. This proves that he loves us. Does he chastise the nations? Of course not. Right? And for you simple jakes, um, save all nation jakes, you John 3.16 jakes, just because you have a homeless Edomite doesn't mean he's being chastised. That's 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 his fault. You had a 400 year head start. So the Most High is truly only dealing with the world of Israel in terms of being chastised. Because he's chastising us in a form of love. So we know our correction. Whenever something happens to the nations, it's more so a form of torment. This is Sarak 30 and... Eleven, give him no liberty in his youth and weak not at his follies. This right here, this is folly. Good job. <laughs> we all think that we thrive with people who are just like us, but I mean, I think getting a different perspective from someone else who isn't like you really helps, and that definitely helped me in um, becoming me and uh, defining my truth. And um, she actually really helped me to become a better myself. And mm -hmm. I'm really glad. And I, I, your advice is impeccable. Um, I don't know if I can even expand on that. But yeah, I would definitely You're agree with you. a pretty good job. <laughs> we all think that. And, and Oprah is a pedophile. But something. This is what happens when you. Um, what the scriptures say. This is what happens when you give your child liberty. This is exactly what happens. And and for those who don't know liberty, they have free range to do anything that their that their hearts desire. Again, you following after your own hearts is this that's the mentality that got us that, that got us to America today. Babylon and Great, that's the main reason we're here. One of the main reasons because we want to follow after our own hearts. So now your kid is wearing a purse, fingernails, they painted, got the long hair, got the dress. Everything in this picture is abominable, right? What is this? And he should be ashamed. But Israel, he has no shame. So if you have no shame, then you will never be corrected. That's why it says in verse 12, bow down his neck while he is young. And beat him on the sides while he is a child, right? Because a, a child mind is not is not where it should be, right? Which is why you need to, which is why you need to guide him or her, but in, in this case, him, lest he wag stubborn and be disobedient unto thee, and so bring sorrow to thine heart. Now watch, I'm calling it now. What is it? Friday the 6th. It's like your Friday the 11th, the 6th month, which is June, and, ba and Babylon agreed. Um, watch Wayne Wade or Gabrielle Union say, oh, I feel as though we made a mistake. I don't think this is the way that I wanted it to go. This is the right direction. They're going to end up saying that eventually. Right? More than likely. Because, you know... <laughs> They know in their spirit that deep down in their spirit, they understand this isn't right. But perhaps they're they're too far gone. That's wicked. All right. And you got to remember, this is going back to the Illuminati. You know, they, they, they choose one industry plan or one so-called black celebrity and have his kid get turned out. First, it starts with the man. He's going to get turned out. And then the whole household gets turned out. Right. And and predominantly the kids. Right. The kids become a sacrifice. This isn't a conspiracy anymore. It's not, you know, something to ponder. Maybe, maybe not. You know, we know it is what it is. Um, 
where do I want to start? This is the book of Jeremiah. Salakia, let me find it. Salakia, uh, Jeremiah 11 and 8. And it reads, Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the, all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. All right. So as a result, hey, all the word, all those curses as written in Deuteronomy twenty eighth chapter, and now they're set against us. Now they're happening right now, and we can see it. Right, we experience it. Right, we li we're li people lived it, and we're living it now. All right. So Israel, don't follow after your own heart. Let me give uh, one more in Jeremiah 13 and mm. that's what I want. It actually starts up a little bit more. I'll get to the crux of it. Um, you can read the rest in your own time, but Jeremiah 13 and 1. That said, the Lord unto me, go and get thee a linen girdle and put it upon thy loins and put it not in water. So I got a girdle according to the word of the Lord and put it on my loins. We'll read it all down at 10, um, verse three. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time saying, take the girdle that thou, ha that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins and arise, go to Euphrates and hide it there in a hole of the rock. So I went and hid it by Euphrates as the Lord commanded me. And it came to pass after many days that the Lord said unto me, Arise, go to Euphrates and take the girdle from thence, which I commanded thee to hide there. Then I went to Euphrates and digged, digged and took the girdle from the place where I had it, had hid it. And behold, the girdle was marred, meaning destroyed. It was profitable for nothing then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus said the Lord, After this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. This evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them, shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. So now, Jake, your pride is good for nothing. And especially in this month, you know, our verse is fitting because your pride is destroyed, right? You may think, you know, you live in a glamorous life and all is dolly dolly and milkshakes and and, 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 and what, um, nine laters and there's all types of sweets and good. But hey, guess what? You're going to be destroyed along with your pride. Look at this wickedness, man. This is a grown ass man in a dress. And guess what he's doing? Influencing the youth. That you can do those things that I'm doing. That you know, that he's doing. Let me get this. This is Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Right? For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and of all the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. But the main thing I want to extract from this is that you have false prophets. Right, you have, you know, and, and a you got to remember, a false prophet is not going to come in a in a in the same manner as a righteous prophet, with the staff, the apocrypha, the Bible, the the uh, the gir their girdle, their um 
their fringes, their garments, their boots, and austere, they're not going to come in that manner. They're going to come sissified. They're going to come real emotional. You see? But with that, I bid Ezra Shalom and to stay strong in the spirit and to repel these evil, wicked demons.